two, three. Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Venti from Harvard and I'm excited to show you guys what we've been doing here um, for, for our Spotlight instance. And what you see on the screen right now is 22 exhibits that are now live. And just a little side note, we call exhibits collections here. So if I say the word collection, just think spotlight exhibit. So what I wanna give you guys is a little bit of a background of how these collections came about first. Um, so they, these all existed previously on old, unsecure, custom software that was being shut down um, at the end of the summer of 2018. And so we knew that they needed to be migrated and we were working on a tight deadline. And to complicate things further, we had a couple different collection types that we needed to, de to develop for. Most of the collections had fully digitized content, but some had a mix of digitized and non-digitized content. And we even had a couple that were just solely non-digital content. So um, I'm gonna dive into these. Oh, and, and the examples of those are actually down at the bottom here. These ones here are the non-digital content collections. Um, so I'm gonna dive into those a little bit more in a moment, but I first wanna show you guys how um, the newly created infrastructure, um, how we use that to make all of this happen. So I'm gonna switch over. Um, and you know, what better way to do that than uh, an infrastructure diagram? <laughs> um, so what to me is what, what's so cool about this diagram is what we have going on here in the middle, which is our library cloud system. And how this works is we ingest records from our source catalogs, so our main bibliographic catalog, images, archival records, we grab some content from our digital repository, and then we ingest all of that into library cloud, normalizing it um, into mods in, in the process. And this little database down here that you see is actually contains a handful of some of the custom collections that we have um, where Spotlight is actually their only public using user interface. And so those are, are actually some of the collections that I mentioned that had the digitized, the mix of digitized and non-digitized content. And so, once all the records are in library cloud, we have a custom application over here called Set Builder that we use to create sets of the records that then we want to do something with. And so to do something with that set, we use the OAI PMH data provider to either harvest that set into Spotlight or we can also harvest it as well to places like DPLA. And um, the, what was a great kind of outcome of this migration was, you know, Library Cloud was first developed, I think like a few years ago, um, but this migration was really the first time that we were using this new infrastructure, the, the first, user interfaces to use this new infrastructure. So in the process, we discovered a ton of bugs and you know, ways to enhance how our data was coming in and being enriched. And so, so we, we made a lot of good fixes to, to this whole system so that it better supports searching and display of all of this data. So now I, let's take a look at what the results actually look like. So going back over to Spotlight, um, I'm gonna flip over to this Daguerreotypes collection. So as you can see, we've added a custom design to our instance. We've got a little bit of a different styling on our header. We've got some 
styling on our facets. We've added a footer down here. And all of these design elements are in line with um, what you would see on our other Harvard Library websites. And so if we went to just browse the items, you'll see masonry view. I don't think we actually did anything different here. This should look very much the same as out of the box. Same with grid view. There might be slightly different fonts, but other, otherwise it should be very similar. And list view, you'll see, you'll see our font choice is a little different. And we also fixed um, an issue where sometimes we were seeing like a gap between the metadata and the title with the thumbnail. So we, we corrected for that. And then if we go into one of the records, let's find a not uh, a little more pleasant photo is some of the ones that were coming up. <laughs> and, um, so on the full item view page, you can see we've expanded the width um, of the viewer space so that um, it appears much bigger on the page. And we've switched out the default viewer for our Harvard's Mirador viewer. And then below the viewer, we have all the item metadata information that we pulled in from Library Cloud. And we're serving out this content here directly from our repository rather than making a copy within Spotlight. So that's a really great feature. And then going back to the home page here, um, most of the collections that we migrated were pretty simple. They, they only had a single page of like description about the collection and then it was really just searching and browsing. And so we came up with a, um, like a standard homepage template that we've used for almost all the collections where we've got a little description here. We've created this browse all tile. Um, but this collection actually had a custom website done for it previously, and so it had a bunch of pages, and you can see we've, we've migrated most of them here. So, for example, if I go to this page, you can see we started to use some of the spotlight widgets to highlight items within the collection. But for the most part, you'll you'll mostly find just a home page on, on our exhibits for the time being. Um, so now I wanted to show you a collection um, that is, this one is a, oh no, I wanted to show you this one first. This collection, oh, let, let me actually back up one second. Sorry, the viewers covering my cursor. Okay, so I wanted this collection down here is our course catalog archive, and it's actually we we broke it out into three separate spotlight exhibits, but it originally is one database, and because of the way we received the the data we had to break it into three separate exhibits but we wanted a way to tie them back together so we used this triptych to to do so visually which marilyn did an awesome job doing that and we're super excited about how that came out we think it looks really cool so i'm going to jump you over into the course archive and um, so here we decided not to actually show that browse title because this really isn't a browsable collection. It's really just data. And so, for example, if we wanted to see what the physics department had for classes, you will get a list of the, the, the physics classes. Um, and we're only showing a list view in this, in this collection. And you can see there's no thumbnails showing. And if we were to go in to look at a record, you see we've also disabled the viewer and we're just 
just showing the, the metadata itself. And so what's kind of interesting about this collection was this, this is one of the ones that lives in that special Mongo database and we had to make a special schema for it. You know, this, this obviously this uh, metadata here is not very your standard typical library resource metadata. Um, so so we really had to do something special to make this collection work in Spotlight. So that's the course catalog. Um, and then I'm going to show you um, another, this collection here. This collection is also using that same theme where we've taken away the imagery, but it actually has a mix of both digitized and non-digitized content. And so, for example, here again, you're not going to see thumbnails, but instead we've decided to link out to things like this collection will have, some records will have audio and a transcript, some will have one or the other, and some will have neither. So we've got a kind of a mix of stuff going on here. And if I, um, do a search here for this name that I cannot pronounce. Uh, <laughs> you'll see um, how we link out to it. So it's, it, we list them in the list view. And then again, when we go into the full view, it's similar to what we were seeing in that other collection. And clicking on the audio will take the viewer, the user to our streaming delivery service. And then clicking on the transcript will take them out to uh, the, our mirror door viewer in a separate window. So that's that collection. And then I, the last one I wanted to show you guys was similar actually to, to this, the, um, the Iranian oral history that I just showed you. Um, but this is, this collection also has a mix of audio and transcripts. But here we actually decided to display the thumbnails for this collection. We decided not to do that for the other collection because the image quality just was not that good um, for the transcripts. But for this collection, we thought it kind of, it would help the users in browsing the collection. And so you can kind of see there's a, a thumbnail over here. And so if I click in, you'll actually see the, the transcript will show up within Spotlight itself rather than clicking out. And then, um, I guess there's no audio for this record, but if there were audio, that would appear down there in the metadata as well. And so that does, though, have a negative Im impact in that when a collection or a record doesn't have um, a transcript, this, this box will appear blank because there's nothing to show here. And so, and that's just because we weren't able to program logic into the code to hide that viewer when there was no transcript. But yeah, here's the, the audio file down there. So that is um, about all I want to show you guys for, I think that's, that covers all the customizations that we made for Spotlight. Um, the, most of them were, like I said, for the non-digitized content, but going forward, we actually anticipate most, if not all of our collections will have fully digitized content. Um, so that kind of brings us to where we are at present, which um, we are developing instructions and trainings for curators of these migrated collections so that they can then enhance their Spotlight exhibits and really take full advantage of all of Spot Spotlight's features, which we're really just doing very, a little bit of right now on a handful of collections. Um, and then I'm really happy to see that we have launched our collection building service. We call it Curiosity. And we are accepting new requests. And we're even actively working with a curator right now on building a new collection. So that, that's all I've got for you guys. And I'm happy to take any questions. 
Um, Vanessa, I think uh, I'll go ahead and keep the recording going while there are some questions because uh, it, may, it may be helpful to people, you know, um, who are watching the recording. So um, kudos, fantastic job. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. Oh, that is, it truly is, uh, Vanessa, that is really impressive. Um, and thank you. And that triptych, I really do want to hear a little bit more about it. That just looks so <laughs> cool. Uh, you know, how, how did you do that and how do you keep it straight like that? Yeah, so this was just one image that we found and we had a couple of different ideas about how to connect these. At first we're like, maybe we'll use the same image and then tone them slightly differently to sort of connect them that way. And then I was like, well, this is like a, a really good landscapey image. And I think it was just Marilyn, Marilyn was the, the master artist behind putting it together. Um, and I think it was just kind of trial and error, right, to sort of match it, get it to match up. And, and I think if I resize, yeah, I think when you resize the screen, it still, still kind of stays together, which just, yeah. <laughs> so um, now if you, if you add a new, I'm sorry if I interrupted anybody, but if, if you add a new exhibit, yeah, I have to order them very carefully so that it won't break. <laughs> so it won't okay. ruin my ordering exactly. Perfect. Uh, Vanessa, I'm a little confused by this. Um, what I'm confused about is I think I heard you say that this is three separate exhibits because you had too much content to fit into one exhibit. Did I? No, it wasn't that. It was that the way the data was coming into us, we, it, it was like split up. You know, it's originally one database, but the, the, the way that we receive it for the archive, it gets split up into three separate files or, you know, it's just structured in a way that we, we had to break it apart. I think theoretically we could do work to get it to to become one exhibit at some point, but it, I think it just required more development time than we had at the moment. But 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 I'm still confused because if I was a user, and I was um, and apologies, I'm sort of like giving you feedback here. But if I was a user, how would I know which one of these to click on? There is. Um, I mean, it, it, there's just three, you know, calendars, courses, or faculty, so it depends on what you're interested in searching. Oh, I see right there. So, um, oh, I wonder if, I, maybe it's not possible. I wonder if it's possible to put that in a different place or highlight it differently, the word calendars, faculty, and courses, because you know what? I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's, that's why good. I was confused. <laughs> good to know. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I also just wanted to ask, I, I have a couple of other questions, but one thing for clarity, um, you're using a lot the phrase uh, non-digitized content, and I'm pretty sure I know what you mean, but I just want to be sure. What you, I think what you mean is in those cases, you have some kind of descriptive metadata for physical content somewhere and what you're displaying in the exhibit is the metadata, but, but well, not digital representation of the content. Do I have that right? It could be that. Um, that's definitely one of the cases and the other case is that there never would be any digital aspect to it. The, the record itself is all that there is. So in, for, for these collections here that the course catalog, all there is is the, the, the record of the, it's just data. Got it. Got it, got it. Um, and the final thing, and then I'll let other people, um, is, is um, 
a little later in this call when we talk about the community roadmap. I'm really interested in things um, that the community might be interested in, such as the fact that you disabled the thumbnail display when you don't have, um, you know, when, when you're showing non-digitized non content. Um, that would be really wonderful to contemplate contributing back to the community. And um, I, just, I just really like that feature, so, or that little tweak that you guys did. Thank you. Yeah. But, oh, and I'll just chime in on that uh, as well, Vanessa. I think it would be good to, uh, to find, for us to find some way for us to see all of your tweets because they may give somebody else an idea of how they could accomplish it in their instance of Spotlight as well, uh, including the font changes. Um, yeah, I, you know, I wish we had a developer here to, to go more into what went into that, but I know it was actually a really difficult process for them. What we, we did was we made a separate theme. We actually have two, two themes that both pull together some shared code, I, I believe. Um, and one of them is for the specifically for the no thumbnails and then the other one's just our regular standard theme and and I know that they they found it it was actually like a, a much more difficult process than they thought it would be to to create that and figure out where in the code how to to kind of hook think hook it back in so um, so I think that would be a really great discussion for the developer community to to have and and I'm happy to try to connect folks with our developers and hope that, that happens. Well then uh, in, in just a moment then we'll we'll have Kathy talking about the uh, community roadmap and in that uh, Google Sheet there is a place to list local extensions or local changes uh, and noting it that there would be would be great. That way we could track it as well. So yeah, definitely. I'm definitely planning on um, asking our developers to fill that out because they can certainly speak much much better about what you know what went on on the back end of, and and yeah and what makes sense to make shareable and or make easier to customize and yeah absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Not to monopolize, monopolize the discussion. One last question, and I will shut up too as well. But the diagram that you showed, I also thought was was interesting. We like to see those data flows. So if, if there's a way, maybe you could share that, or if it's a link, or upload it to the wiki and tack it into your uh, institution entry in the wiki. If you feel comfortable sharing it, that would be great as well, Vanessa. Oh yeah, no problem. I'll I'll definitely put it on our our wiki um, our 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 wiki page on the spotlight section. Yeah, Perfect. you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, any other questions for uh, Vanessa and the Harvard team? Okie dokie. Doesn't sound like it. Uh, silence, I think, means no, right? So uh, I'm going to stop the recording then, Mike. Thank okay. you. Uh huh. All right. And again, but